Now let's begin by installing GraphQL Yoga and GraphQL itself. We can do this by installing at GraphQL hyphen yoga slash node. There are many other packages available when installing GraphQL Yoga, but the node package is what we'll need to use when working with Next.js. We'll also need to install GraphQL. With those installed, if we head on over to the package.json file, we can see here at the time of recording that we installed version 2.3.0 for GraphQL Yoga, and for GraphQL itself, we installed 16.3.0. Inside of our API folder where we have hello.ts, this is something that we'll now want to rename to index.ts. We want to make our GraphQL API available at slash API. So let's remove the contents here and now import create server from GraphQL Yoga. Then to create a server, we'll create a new const called server and we'll invoke create server that we imported from Yoga. Then we can pass it some optional configuration options. We can pass it some context, which we'll do later. We can enable or disable cores. We can pass the endpoint and configure a bunch of other options. And most importantly, we'll pass some custom schema a little bit later. For now, let's configure the endpoint and here we'll need to declare this as slash API. This is because the file path for this is at pages slash API slash index.ts. Now, if we open the console and run our development Next.js server, now if we head on over to localhost 3000 slash API, we'll get GraphQL yoga here. If we load the query documentation, we can see here by default, we have a greetings query automatically provided. So if we execute the query greetings, we can see here that we have a response in our data. And this is GraphQL Yoga working out of the box. Everything is set up running inside of our Next.js application. Now inside of the root of the project, let's go ahead and create the file schema.graphql. We'll be using the GraphQL schema definition language to define what our GraphQL schema looks like. The first query that we'll create inside of the schema.graphql file will be the query to fetch a card by ID. We'll pass the ID argument of type ID that will return the card. So we'll now need to define that card type. Here, let's specify that a card has a ID and also it has total items as a integer. And these IDs and integers are built in GraphQL scalar types. Now back inside of our GraphQL yoga server from the path library that's installed by default with node. And then we can also import read file sync from the FS module. Now let's go ahead and define a new const and we'll call this type devs. We'll then use read file sync and we'll pass it join then we'll press it the current process, current working directory. And this is because we're using the Vercel deployment platform to publish this application. This is a special requirement that they need so this works properly in their serverless environment. Then we'll pass it schema.graphql that we created previously. And then we'll need to specify the encoding type. And here this will be UTF-8. Then below our types, we'll then declare some resolvers. Here we'll need to create the resolver name that matches our query. And this will be cart. The resolver takes a number of different arguments. The first is the root or the parent object. Then we have the current arguments that's passed to cart. And in this case, this will be ID. We'll then need to return an object that matches our GraphQL schema. So at the moment we just have the ID and we have total items. So I will return the ID and then total items as zero. You'll see here if we hover over ID, that we have a warning from TypeScript and the same for our first argument. We'll fix these a little bit later in another episode with the GraphQL code generator so we can correctly type this const here. Right now, it's all just implicit any. Then we'll need to pass the type definitions and the resolvers to the schema property of our GraphQL server. Now, if we go back to our GraphQL server and we refresh the browser, if we now look inside of our root types inside of the documentation explorer, we can now see that we have that cart query, which accepts the ID argument of type ID that returns the nullable card. And we can see all of the fields that that card type has. So inside of graphical, if we now make a query and we pass a ID of one week GraphQL, and this could be anything because it's just returned and inside of the resolver. And then if we execute this query, we can see here that we have the ID that we forwarded on from the arguments. And then we have the total items as zero. If we go back to the code and we update the resolver to return 10, then we re-execute this query. You can see here that that response is now 10. 